Welcome to episode two of The Coin Flip. This is a Gwent-themed debate show, and my name is Flake. I'll be your host. The premise is fairly simple. Two prominent Gwent personalities are going to pretty much be discussing three important topics. They're going to debate each side of the coin, each getting about a minute to present their case. Once that wisdom has been dropped, the gloves come off. Now let's meet our gladiators, and the term is pretty much fitting for our first guest. That would be the leader of the Legion, and when he's not letting his Gwent play speak for itself, he is soothing you with his sweet sax sounds. He is Mark Theus. And debating the other side of the coin, Mark Theus' opponent is someone that you know fairly well. You've seen him around, he is definitely a big player on the Gwent scene. He is True Dawn. So, with that aside and the rope burning low, let's get started. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the show, TD and Mark Theus. I assume that you are well familiar with the rules. Yes, indeed. Okay, that is some solid confidence there. Uh, so, what we'll do first is before we flip the coin and get going, I want to say, Mark Theus, do you have anything that you want to say to your opponent before we begin the festivities? I guess a good luck, have fun. That is no yeah. fun at all. We'll that see is, how that goes. That is not at all fun. <laughs> True Don, do you have yeah. anything that you want to go and say to your opponent, my friend? Uh, you have a really cool raid notification on your stream. <laughs> Thank <awesome>. you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a compliment. All right. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this is definitely – yeah, all right. We're setting, the, we're setting the bar real high for animosity here. By the end of it, we might actually be holding hands. This is going to be great. Uh, so we're going to flip the coin, and uh, True Don, as the Elder Statesman, you're going to get to call it. So we've got uh, – I have an, a, a 50 cent piece. Uh, that is heads. That is tails. So if you want to call it, we'll flip it, and then we'll go from there. Uh, tails. All right, tails. It is, in fact, tails. So ah. would you like to defend or debunk the first statement, my friend? Um, defend. Yeah, I'll defend. Okay, so the topic, the first topic that we're going to be discussing is high-tempo Gwent decks are the only way to excel in competitive level Gwent. So, Trudon, you got 60 seconds, my friend. Make your case. Okay, so the way Gwent works on a fundamental level, you just have to make better raw point plays than the other person. There just aren't things that care about being in play that generate points over time, really. So you are just incentivized to just have massive plays like Ithlin and Siri Nova and all of this stuff that just has an immediate impact because there really isn't a payoff for like putting one thing in play and then you play something else to synergize with it and then you like get more points. Stuff like that, like Great Sword Longship, are just like bad. And like maybe they could be good at some point, but it would require a complete overhaul of like the entirety of the rest of the game in order for that to be the case. I think they should probably do that. But as it stands right now, it's just like there's not enough payoff for the synergies and all of like the raw point just like immediate impact cards are too good. All right, sounds good. Mark this other side, my friend. Am I defending this? I can't remember what you, what you, you are said. debunking the statement. You do not like <laughs> okay. the statement. You're yeah. here to argue. I do not like the yeah, so whether you agree with it or not, that I do not care, my friend. That is not for uh for you to right. decide. So sure. you tell me why will you tell me why uh why uh high tempo decks are not the only way to excel at high level Gwent. Sure, sure. I think I think uh uh Gwent uh what sets it apart from other card games is its diversity in in cards, right? So uh while you can play high, high tempo decks and high tempo cards constantly, which will obviously give you an advantage, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you're always going to uh, get the best of the board. You could play a lot of, uh, uh, with all the RNG elements being added in, you could play a lot of randomness that could get you the win. So you don't necessarily need to play all this high tempo. Some of the cards that uh, True Don mentioned are maybe some high tempo cards. However, if I throw some randomness in there, well, I've just thrown your whole game out of whack, didn't I? So, so I think the RNG element <laughs> plays a good part to kind of uh, say that, well, you don't really need to have high tempo to uh, necessarily win the game. So true, Don, you're kind of telling, you're saying that, I mean, there's not enough that uh, on the other side of the board to really affect your, your, your outcome, your, your win condition. So a lot of your, your, your win condition is coming from your own side of the board. And in that case, it's point value, like from raw, a raw perspective, right? 
Yeah. I mean, I would love for everything to be designed like greatsword longship or like you need to get multiple things in play to achieve max value. And there's like some there's synergies that create value over time that your opponent can interact with and all that stuff. But unfortunately, that is the only deck that functions that way. Every other deck just has all of its stuff come into play, do its thing, and that's it. Like there's no synergies need to cobble together. There's like no build up. There's no tension. It's just I'm going to play Ithlin. Or I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play Yorvith Meditation. Like all of these cards are worth like thirty, and there's like nothing you can do about it. There's just not a, a great deal of interplay involved. It's kind of the main problem with like the current state of Gwent because they they have not allowed themselves that room to create tension, to create synergies, to have things on the board matter, and. I would like for them to try and get to that point, but as it stands right now, it's just not the case. Well, makes sense. I just like the fact that uh, both of those big offending cards are both Square Tell uh, legendaries. <laughs> there's, yeah, no there's, there's some oopsies over there in the green color. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> green making a screen. Now, yeah. mark this. I mean, yes. one thing that I want to ask about uh, what you said is that you're saying that randomness can can get you the win and, and that high tempo sure. play is not the only you know path to victory but what sure. aspect of, of randomness are you essentially talking about because isn't isn't just so, generating something random gonna for a bomb tempo play that's what you're kind of getting that there's nothing that's really that's just like a one-off isn't it sure so trudon's talking about pure massive power on your board just i played my biggest guys throw them on the board that's high tempo you can't you can't catch up to me but Cards like uh, Usurper, one of the new leaders who can create a random gold for me, uh, might give me a gold uh, leader that uh, will help me out. It might give me, uh, what? what's the other new, the new um, Scoitel leader that could get me oh. a spell that could help me out. Pretty boy. Uh, things like that. So uh, the, the random, especially with the stones as well, the new stones could end up giving me a card that I need to have a big tempo shift to have a, a swing. Um, so while you could just throw all your guys on the board, have no interaction, just go balls to the walls and say, here's all my points and good luck. Uh, I think the RNG adds an element of we could slow this down a little bit and maybe, maybe I'm going to throw your game off by, uh, maybe I get a good card out of, out of this. I do, I do feel bad for you a little bit, Mark, this, because you did kind of get this to, def uh, to debunk this statement in a meta that is essentially infested I with high-value dwarves. Yeah. So I do I do definitely sympathize with your point of uh, your, your point of attack here, because you're really coming to the battlefield with a little bit less ammo than Trudon does, because he's he's literally just saying, look what's going on. Like, look what look at yeah. the, the meta right now. He's You're defending the... a statement that he knows is true. I know. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Coin flip OP in this show and in the game. Exactly, yeah. which is hilarious. <laughs> because I will, I will let the the viewers know and the, and those listening that they do that that Marthias and Trudon uh, they were aware about maybe twenty four hours ago. Especially this is the case, especially for Trudon, who's uh, an awesome fill in right here and an awesome guest. Is that he found out about these topics probably about eight hours ago? So his preparation was a little bit. Uh, you know, short-lived versus uh, Marthius, let's say. But Marthius just got hosed on the fact that he lost coin flip. So coin flip itself, maybe that's a topic <laughs> we can discuss down the road. So any parting shots, guys, on this topic? Because, uh, I mean, I don't want to crown a winner, but it was just such a, 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 a difficult uphill battle for you, Marthius, on this one. It, it's just like there's no incentive for doing things that, like, accrue value later like Stefan Skellen or um, like the buff Francesca gives on Tudor, like all these things that are like cool effects that set things up that can do things later. They're just, they pale in comparison to just like raw points because there's really no incentive to like cobble together synergies or like assemble a plus B. So all of these things that like set up your hand for the next round or like put points in the next round, this like losing the initial impact is so bad because there's like, it's so easy to punish falling behind and there is no way to come back from being behind. So it's just like the way the game is currently structured. It's just like, no, it makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. So that, I guess a lot of this just comes down to fi fix, fix a few things. Yeah. <laughs> few, a few, maybe just a few, <laughs> <laughs> just a few again. Well, uh, rip Mark the on this one, man. There's no, there, there are no points awarded or anything like that. So don't even worry about it. There'll always come back for another round, which we will get to right after this. 
Hey everybody, do you want to be on an episode of the Coin Flip? Do you want your name to be there or maybe there? Hit me up and tell me why you'd make a great contestant here on the Coin Flip. So after round one has wrapped up, we're going to go straight to round two. And it's a decent lead in and a great segue for the discussion that we just actually had, the debate that raged on. Uh, RNG effects, which uh, Mark Thea said, you know what, that has a lot of prominence. There you go. Some redemption. A uh, great segue. If anything, Mark Thea, you might have lost that round, but at least you won the segue battle. Uh, and that's not, well. that's not a two a, a race on like a scooter or anything. Uh, <laughs> so Mark Thea is going to be defending the f- uh, following statement, and this mm. might actually bite you in the ass again. But uh, the statement is, create effects are good for the game of Gwent. Give us your piece, my friend. <clears throat> well, boy, I'm just getting shafted here in this game. Uh, <laughs> create mechanics are good for Gwent. Uh, the cards like uh, the stones uh, are, are a good example because those are, I think, the most interesting create mechanics. I think uh, are are good for the game because it uh, uh, before before those cards existed, there wasn't really a whole lot of RNG in Gwent. There was a little bit, but not really a lot. And we're talking about RNG. I'm sure everybody knows what that means. It's a random effect, right? So I play the stone. I might get a random card. It creates a random card for me. Or a usurper will create a random uh, gold, another gold leader for me. Uh, the reason why I would say that this is good for Gwent is because it creates a nice element of surprise that otherwise didn't exist before. Um, it breaks up the monotony of uh, of archetypes. So if I if I'm playing against a, a dwarf archetype, well, I, I pretty much know the cards you're going to be running in that in that deck. But um, if I throw some randomness in there as well, well, now I've just thrown off your game plan to figure out what I'm doing. So I think in that way, uh, create cards do add an interesting element of surprise without it going too crazy of being too random. Um, I think limiting the create cards to being you could you're going to make one of these three things. Is is a is a good thing for Gwent. That's fair. I like that statement. True Don, you're up, my man. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the boo RNG bad guy. <laughs> All right, uh, there's actually a lot to talk about with like uh, create. So um, create is obviously most comparable to discover in Hearthstone. It's a very similar mechanic. They both pull from three things outside the game. Uh, but one of the key differences between these two mechanics and the reason I don't think create has really been net positive for Gwent is that in Hearthstone, most of the things that discover cards put the card into your hand because that's how that game works. You can like play stuff later. So you can look at some cards, see something, be like, okay, I think I can leverage this, take it, and then sculpt the game in such a way from that point to leverage that card. That's not how Create and Gwent works. Uh, you immediately play the card you take. So in most cases, you're just like looking at the cards and be like, oh, this is seven, this is eight. Okay, I'll take the eight. Sure. There, again, because we talked about before, there's not really any payoff for cobbling together synergies. You're just like taking the highest raw point thing you got from the create pool. So in that respect, it's not really it's adding the illusion of variance. Like you're getting points with different cards, but it's like the same play patterns. So I well, I agree that Gwent needs to be more varied and you need to have a more dynamic experience and that random mechanics are a way to achieve that i think the specific implementation of create has not really worked out well because it doesn't alter play patterns because things come into play immediately okay so you're saying that the fact that they just hit the board and have immediate impact and it comes down again to almost like a numbers game the ran the random elements to it it's not owing to what you said before where there's there's no time to really cobble together a synergy like you said because because of how little like unique effects matter, you're essentially making it so there's just like all of this stuff in the middle and whichever one of those you get, it doesn't matter because they're all the same. Or you could low roll, in which case you're a huge dog to win from that point, or you high roll, in which case you're like very favored to win. So when everything's operating in the middle like it should, it doesn't matter because they're all the same. And when you open up the pool to a wider array of options, you're just going to make it so sometimes people high roll or low roll and it's like game deciding. So as long as we're just like playing raw points back and forth and the effects don't matter, create is bad. (laughs) Uh, Mark this. Those be fighting words. (laughs) 
Uh, I get a rebuttal, right? Oh yeah, man, you guys can go at it. Like, don't let, don't, right. don't let me hold uh, you back. I'll give a, I'll give a good specific example of of where create comes into play because you you brought up a good point there, saying that uh, the create mechanics may not have good synergy because you're picking from a pool of create. But if you if you specifically don't go crazy with your create cards, I specifically have a have a dwarf deck. You may have heard of it. it's called Drunk Bohokies. You may have heard of the deck. Anyway, yes, one of the uh, rare synergistic uh, square uh, yes. decks that still has some type of prominence anywhere or that right. you see anywhere. It's not the standard dwarf deck that most people are running. This casino dwarfs madness that everyone's all the craze these days. Um, but the I run one random card in that in that deck, and that's the Mahakam Horn. And the reason why I play that card is because yes, it can boost something by seven, and I do play Marauders, uh, which it, that's a nice boost. But the reason why I run that card is because it will create a random dwarf card for me out of my three choices most of the time that i've played that card i am happy with all three choices i've been given now sometimes i will get uh three that i go hey there's not it's not going to really work here sometimes i'll pull an extra yarpin which is really helpful or uh uh pull another um agitator which can make me another marauder so it's like in that scenario um i'm only using one rng element so it so it could save me from a tight spot, and that's that's where I think uh, create uh, is actually really helpful. It can save you from a very tight spot if you use it correctly. If you use it, uh, if you don't go crazy with it, and and if you if you're using it uh, uh, to have synergy with your deck, which it can, uh, then I think creates actually a good thing. But at what point? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Trudon. Uh, I actually like I lost the thought. <laughs> so <you didn't laughs> well, know. so it, Mark, this you're you're mentioning that yeah. you know. It's it's great in a limited standpoint, right? But sure. at what point does does that become a hindrance? Where you know you're saying it's a, it could possibly be your get out of jail free card, but right. from a competitive stamp, uh, you know, perspective, and I hate to just kind of la put everything into that kind of nucleus where everything that matters has to be from a competitive standpoint because it's not necessarily yeah. true because a very small right. portion of people play this competitively versus those who just go casual or just play ranked ladder um sure but when that card is played and i played the h word for years so to speak and, mm. and i you know hearthstone was a big part of my life for a while and i kind of got a salty taste in my mouth after the fact where you know it was only on my thousandth shredder dropping a doomsayer that i was like okay i'm done with this you know and yeah. that sort of meta was already washed away before it got replaced by more rng what worries me is that maybe this is something that it's good now to a relatively limited degree and they have been tinkering right. with it but it's too much not good well, that's where you bring up an interesting point because I, I specifically left Hearthstone probably the same reasons as everybody else is the RNG got out of control. Most of the most of competitive players who've left as well, like people like, I don't know, I want to name drop, but you know who. Uh, Life Pitch is the premier one. Right, yeah. he, that's yeah. what I was going to say. He, he Him and Super JJ as well also left because of that reason. Um, and they just kept adding more and more RNG and it, it just got to the point where every match was like, it doesn't really matter what I'm playing I can throw Yogg at the end of the game and completely turn the whole game around. So uh, I think right now Gwent's at a very interesting place where they threw a little bit more RNG than it already had, which was very minimal to begin with, and they threw a little bit more into the mix. And I think right now, uh, I will say that if they put any more RNG into it, it's probably not a good idea. But I think right now the create cards bring an interesting element to the game. And let's also not forget that there there is possibly a new game mode that the create cards could be for. So if that's the case, then I think Create's actually really fun because uh, if there is going to be uh, some of the new game modes that have been being whispered about, I think Create plays a really fun element in, in the in the game together. I think that's one thing Hearthstone had going for it too, is uh, when you played Arena and you had some RNG in there, it actually made it really helpful to have an RNG card of this random deck that you would be creating in Arena. Um, so I think right now Create's very good where it's at. I think I think it's right right down the middle with create any more might be pushing it. But I think right now it's at a good spot. Uh, there is like a Goldilocks zone of variance like there RNG is on a diminishing return where a little bit of it adds variety to games, which is good because you don't want things to get stale. But the more you add, the more it erodes player agency and then like things start to not matter and people stop playing your game. So like obviously back when they got Silver Spies before they just recently hot fixed it that swung the pendulum very far away from removing player agency because if you got a spy during a spy fight, you won the game. 
Like it was ridiculous. Like that's all like the axe mirrors were about. It's like the high hit their spy. Okay, the summoning circle, and like you just see who has more spies, and that was the whole game. So now that that's fixed, there are still some high rolls on some of the silvers, like Joachim out of the uh, Nilfgaard runestone. Um, I apologize for my dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah. RNG right there. That was yeah, that, that's, was that is a good. That is RNG <laughs> being net bad, as you say. Yeah. But yeah, I um. Joachim out of the Nilfgaard one. Um, if you're playing Axeman and you get a second Duran or Sigdrifa or Restore off of the um, the Skellige one, those are massive swings because of how important those cards are. And I think a lot of the problems that arise from Create arise from kind of just the overall design of the factions, where a lot of them just are centralized on a particular set of cards. And if you get a second one of those, it breaks the game. So as long as things are designed the way they are create getting secondary like Joachim's or restores or whatever is just going to give a massive advantage and even in the cases like I said before where you like are kind of operating in the middle and you get like three bad options from like the rune stones there you're just like counting the numbers it's not really providing a new play experience you're not doing some cool effect you wouldn't otherwise like in Hearthstone sometimes you get like a weird card that you have to play differently with in Gwent, that's not really the case. You get a different card you don't usually play with, but it doesn't play differently. You're not making decisions around it because like things in play don't matter. They don't really have effects. Like you're not getting like a Saskia Dragonfire or something. And even in that case, it doesn't really like play different. That's the the main issue I've had with Gwent in recent history is the they've eroded a lot of the things that cultivated interesting play patterns. And we are now left at a point where you're just like play a dwarf, buff a dwarf. So a like lot of the problems with create are more so problems with the overarching design of the game. But because of the state the game is in, it makes create just not really function the way it could or should. Is it a card limit issue, though? Like, is it really the fact that, I mean, you can have three of any bronze you want, but the powerful aspect of, of silvers and how they can potentially really... I don't want to say yeah. break games, but give enormous swings. And the fact that you can have two at a time in certain cases could just really... I mean, the one thing that I thought of that could be close that was pre-create is playing Aridin Frost, right? And you drop... A, let's say you drop an Iris and then you play a Caretaker to drop another Iris. In some yeah. cases, that is a huge swing. That is playing two times the silver that you would otherwise never really have an option for. Same thing with uh, Sigdrifa with Skellige and playing Gremis twice or something along yeah. those lines. Well, like the difference is like those like Skellige that's out, or um, Sidrefa that's obviously the point of the card. Like the silvers, silvers and golds in Gwent are designed with the express purpose of being like one shot effects. Like those are the really power effects you're only supposed to be able to use once. And we've seen in the past like um, renew. I get restore and renew mixed up every time, but renew. <laughs> on like villain Trettenmirth and other cards like kind of breaks stuff in half like back when the Radovid control deck was good when you could like play a control deck you could immediately lead off with villain Trettenmirth play Thaler into it and then they would have to get out of the round they couldn't play anymore and then you would bleed down to round three and then renew villain Trettenmirth for your finisher and that is obviously something that like you're not supposed to be able to do and you could debate how problematic that is but it sets up stuff in the future where if we're like recurring gold cards or recurring silver cards, stuff's going to break because there are, is going to be a gold card or a silver card. You're not supposed to play multiple times because of the design of the card. So create also has this side effect of giving you secondary uses of effects. You shouldn't have secondary uses of the most egregious example of that was obviously spies, but there's like other things like Joaquin Restore, like Restore is absurd to get a second one. You kind of are like win on the spot if you get that. So as long as there's these really powerful silvers and discovers that can make secondary effects of them, you're going to have some problematic games. Oh, well said. Well said, you're right. And uh, Mark Diaz, how do you feel about that one? <clears throat> well, he said he said about, uh, you mentioned renewing Usurper, is that what you said? Would you say renewing it? Oh, renewing oh, it. Trend Mirth was Bork, the yeah. example I used, but like, there's a bunch of stuff that becomes yeah. problematic with the card. I've I've been a, a victim of that play before. You know that kind of got the swapped around and and whatnot. But it, it is kind of impressive, and and the fact that you're playing the same powerful card twice, it just sort of you're circumventing the the card limit, which was there for a reason. You don't want to have these kind of enormous play effects, like playing. You know, if, 
if it was up to me, I'd just play a swarm deck and pack four, you know, Yennefer's in there and just go from there. Right? <laughs> like that one, but I mean, it, right? Or or I would just drop, uh, you know, a Triss Butterfly spell and just five times four and just win out of just passing and waiting, you know? But um, I guess from in that regard, I mean. But are we, are you calling, you're calling Renew we mentioned renew. Are we calling renew an RNG? Because it's not really at all. It's no, a... no. But I mean, this goes back to the fact that these creator cards are kind of giving you a second, a second life of a card that you otherwise wouldn't get. Much like, um, you know, playing dropping the double iris on the board uh, with. Sure, but th yeah. that's that was my point of getting you out of a tight spot. That's that's what can get you. Out okay, of a tight spot. and they did they did correct one thing that I'm sure we were uh, even I was upset about it, the fact that the uh, create cards would make a spy, which obviously is the most ridiculous thing. Because the when you talk about the card advantage, like that was like pretty insane to be able to get massive card advantage because you have like thirty of the same card spy cards sitting on the on your side of the board. But uh, they they've corrected that issue, thank God. And so now uh, I think the create mechanic is actually works a little works a little bit more in your favor now. The one interesting uh, create mechanic that I've run into is uh, with the uh, with the stone for uh, the Nilfgaard faction, where it could create a uh, oh god, she's not called uh, fake Siri anymore. Which oh, Empress. The Empress, I think. The Empress. Yeah, that I think is the most intriguing create mechanic because when you see that played, or when you get that, that's a yes moment because it's like oh, I got him. He's not gonna expect this ever. Who runs this card anymore? <laughs> so <laughs> it is you definitely got, something you, to, you to drop think that. About. Oh yeah, because not now, like that, but, but but think about think about the spot it could get you out of though. Like uh, if I'm in a dry pass on round two. I have I'm stuck with playing a card. I I drop the stone. Well, let's see what I get because I don't want to waste any card that's going to have synergy or, or you know like I'm not going to waste another card that I might need for round three. I could just drop the stone and just see what let's see what it gives me and and it'll probably give me something good. If I get uh, Siri, that's okay. Cool. I drop it on my side of the board. It's just it can get you out of those kind of situations, which I think are really helpful. I you think you're right on that case. I mean, in terms of uh, RNG from a create aspect, it's not a it's not a surefire thing. It's not like yeah. um, again, not to, to take it back to okay, let's use let's use Larry the Arc Spores and as a you know as your as your example in this case, it deals four yeah. damage to a random unit with with its death wish. Now. Mm. Sometimes you roll the dice and you say, I need to get this particular unit off the board to break up this row or to, to stop this effect or whatnot. And, you know, that is definitely a, a random element to a guaranteed sort of outcome. When you're playing a runestone, you have no idea what you're getting and if there's any further RNG off of that further down the ro uh, road. So I think that the, the power swing in these cases might actually just be kind of tuned out by the fact that rolling the dice, as you'll always get something good. But yep. probably less than 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 often, you'll get something enormously game breaking. Now, don't get me wrong; it sucks when you get that card, like you said, when the Empress comes out and it's dropped on you, and you have no idea how to deal with it because you're not prepared for it. Let's be honest; someone people play one one Thunderbolt or one Alzer's Thunder, maybe off of, of a Mage to get get rid of it right away. But it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. But sure. Um, but that, that, but that's, but if you're the one playing it, hey, good for me. Exactly. Right? Okay. So, uh, so maybe <laughs> so, we'll talk, we can agree that it puts more people into the game. It gives more people a chance to win. And uh, I mean, like you, you let off with Marcus when you're saying that you know you, you play Hearthstone, you play ten minutes of Hearthstone, all for it to come down to a, a flip of the coin with Yog Saron, which is a fantastic little plug for this show. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and call this one around. I liked that you guys did awesome on this one. So we're gonna go to round three right after this. Do you have a topic that you want discussed on the coin flip? Send it my way and you might see it on a future episode. All right, we're back and this is going to be round three of the coin flip. This one is going to be a little bit more lighthearted, a little less sort of poignant on the, you know, importance sort of element. Uh, so Trudon, you're going to be the one defending this statement and you have no idea what it is. Neither Mark Theus nor Trudon know what <laughs> statement three is, which makes it fun. Uh, and the statement is... Scorching your own unit is the most embarrassing thing you can do in Gwent. Please tell me why. I have to defend why it is. Oh, yes. The most embarrassing <laughs> thing. I mean, it's like pretty embarrassing, <laughs> mainly because you could just like, you know, look at the board and like. But we've do all some done it. Have maps. we not? I, I yeah, can, I've, oh, I've yeah. done it oh, multiple yeah. times. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but that doesn't change the fact that it's like ridiculously embarrassing because. It just requires you to look at two numbers. 
and, and understand which one is bigger than the other. Right. It's Basically, very easy. it's not even a math scenario. <laughs> it's a greater than, less than scenario. But yeah. I, I just want to ask you guys, when was the last time this has happened to you? Because I can honestly say that it, it was in this calendar year. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think <laughs> it's been a couple months, I think. But I've done, like, other egregious things. I don't think I've scorched my unit in a while, but I've done other egregious stuff. Oh, man. Scorch oh, my I've, unit. <laughs> I've passed well down twice in the past. Oh, months. I've done that. Oh, yeah. I've done that before. All right. Well, mark this. Let's, I guess that might be actually a nice little hint for you, man. What's worse <laughs> than actually scorching your own unit? Oh, there's so many things worth. I think you just mentioned it. passing when you're on the second round. I've done that so many times, and especially when you're streaming and sometimes you're not 100% paying attention. You go, you know, I want a card advantage for round three. I'm going to go ahead and dry pass round <laughs> two. Oh, wait a minute. I'm the one that lost yeah. round one. Yeah. Oh, God. What? That's way more embarrassing than scorching your own unit. I, yeah. I can defend that scorching your own unit sometimes if you're playing like, if you're both playing a swarm scenario and you just didn't, there's like a guy in the corner, you just didn't see it. It happens all the time. It's just, Sometimes it happens. You just can't avoid it. But I think I think dry passing around that you are obviously not going to like that. You're going to lose the whole game because you didn't realize that you lost the first round. I think is way more embarrassing. So that can, can, you know what? Unit. In all honesty, I mean, Trudon saying oh, you got to you got to just look at the board. But sometimes there's like yeah. a two dozen units on the board. You have no idea what the hell's sure. going on. Yeah, whereas, you don't know. Yeah, whereas on the other side, uh, Pat, dry passing round two after you lost round one. That just comes down to the fact that you just got to count crowns. <laughs> just, right. yeah. I have them. I, yeah. I, what am I doing? Yeah, that means you haven't paid pass. attention. I mean, I've even epidemic my own units before. So, like, you could But that you one's could a little less. That. Sometimes, so you see, that one I find is a little less uh, common, mainly because of the fact, or a little less, uh, you know, it's not as bad because you're, you're looking at the board. And sometimes all you see are just giant units, and you don't see that one or on the board or that two, and you're thinking, like, wow, look at all yeah. those. Arrakis that are on the board. I can't wait to just like get it out of the way, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play my I don't know my Elven mercenary to just get it out of the get them all gone, epidemic yep. them, and then all of a sudden you have no clue what the hell just happened, and then you get like the pity pass on the other side. But uh, I mean, both are pretty pretty solidly awful things, and I mean. I, I can say that uh, <laughs> Trudon gave you that one uh, with with the uh, the only thing worse is something I did like last week. But that's okay. So well, I got I got another one though too. I got another one that's, that's probably also not doesn't feel as good as uh, uh, the, if you if you're a one that likes to spam the uh, your character trash talking and all that, and then you know you're winning the whole game, and then by round three you end up losing. <laughs> That's oh. kind of a, a really embarrassing scenario. I, I don't like to do that to people, but man, that's, that's, that's got to be embarrassing to the other person that you just that's not, trash that's talk. Not, that's not so much embarrassing as, as, as justice. It's just justice. <laughs> yeah, it, it's justice, but you know. Justice is Especially good. Especially when, if yeah. you think you're going to win and you watch the other person scorch his own unit off the board after they've been oh. trash talking you the whole time is the most justifying, like. <laughs> yeah, they open up. Oh, they... well played. So I think, the, I think the dream game for all of us right now is that you, you, you queue into an opponent as you're sort of, you know, you're, you're sorting through your cards, you're figuring out what you want to mulligan, and all of a sudden they're just, they're hammering that spam of, uh, of all their emotes. Uh, they yeah. end up scorching their own unit. Uh, they pass you in the round. Then they dry pass on you, and you win in that yep. form and fashion. I think that might actually be the the A plus uh, play for that. Yeah, the worst is the the who told you to fight like this, and they just keep doing it. And like, oh my god! And at the end, they scorch their own guy. Who told you to fight like this, huh? <laughs> I think the drunk the drunk guy was like the freaking worst. Oh yeah, he's a oh, yeah. too. After he's the Mock Mail Festival, I think there was there was this one story where. I was playing against the same guy. I forgot what his name was, but I played it. I played him in three consecutive days. About by the end of it, we had uh, I had a record of like five, four, and one against this guy. And all he did was hammer emotes, hammer emotes. And I'm like, and I was just so pissed off. And they're like, just mute him. I'm like, no, like, <laughs> no, no the mute doesn't work. It doesn't work anymore. I can't get it muted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, I was like, no, I want to know that he's a dick. Like, I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it makes it better than when you beat him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How, how are you going to know that someone's a dick or not if you don't listen to them be a dick? Like, it's just right. Yeah. Schrodinger's dick right there. That's. that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyways, gentlemen, I want to say thank you so so much for uh, being on the show. And uh, Mark Theus, let us know what are your coordinates. How do we find you? What do you do, my friend? Uh, you can find me on the Twitch machine at Mark Theus. Or you can find me on the Twitter machine, also at Mark Theus. That's very Where I do the tweets. Hey, where you do the tweets. And uh, the leader <laughs> yeah. of the Legion, again, uh, Mark Theus, I believe I, he streams uh, Monday to Friday at 11. Uh, yes. 
a.m. Eastern Mo- Standard Time. That's right. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, that's 5 p.m. Central European Time for any of you European viewers. Excellent. And Mr. Trudon, where and when can we find you, my friend? Uh, at Trudon FM or Twitch TV slash Trudon FM is where I stream every weekday from 9 a.m. Eastern until whenever. And I'm also on Twitter, although I do it much worse than these two gentlemen. You guys have like gifts and stuff. Just like <laughs> actually like, know what's going on. But if you want to like see my mediocre takes on various things, you can always follow me there or just to know what's up with the stream. So. I am a, I'm a uh, avid watcher of uh, both of you on stream. Not like I'm not in your bushes or anything. <laughs> I don't have that kind of power. Hey, no. whatever, man. Whatever gets you going. I don't... Yeah. yeah, but that's not up to you. That's up to the police. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, guys. Everybody, check them out. Uh, fantastic. You guys rocked it. So uh, that has been episode two of the coin flip, and we will see you on the other side of the coin. Have a good one. Thank you very much.